For most companies, this is still the office of today. An army of clerks, secretaries and typists use their skill to route messages in and out of filing systems and into the hands of managers. And there's another army of postmen who carry those messages across the country. How very different it'll be in the office of tomorrow. Command, letter, to all branch managers. Message, figures for holding account now required. My office by 1400 hours, please. Signed, Casey, Managing Director. Now, I can read that message here on my screen, and you can also read it on your screens at home. And so, too, would all my branch managers if I were simply to give the command, send. The message would be transmitted down telephone lines to all their offices, where it would appear simultaneously on all their screens. No army of clerks and secretaries, no postmen, no paper. Science fiction? Not a bit of it. Systems like this are in operation in offices all around the country at the moment. The secret ingredient, the nerve center of this office of the future, is a machine called a word processor. So what is a word processor? Why is it so powerful? Well, it's another spin-off from the silicon chip revolution where every day more and more power costs less and less. A word processor is just a computer dedicated to handling text, words. It can be a full-blown mainframe computer costing many thousands of pounds, or it can be a microcomputer like this one. One program that runs in the computer is called a text editor, and this helps you manipulate what you've already written in very powerful ways. For instance, I've just typed this nursery rhyme into the machine, and as you can see, there are one or two deliberate mistakes. Now, on an ordinary typewriter, that would have meant that I'd have had to rip out the whole page. And those of you who type will know that it always seems to happen just when you've reached the end of a page. But with the text editor, I can simply ask the machine to make the alteration for me. So here we go. Change Fred to Mary everywhere it occurs. And there, it actually occurred on two lines, and we've got Fred back to Mary. Let us now ask the machine to print for us the entire revised nursery rhyme in its more recognisable form. You can move lines and paragraphs, change sentences, correct spelling mistakes, without ever having to type the complete text again. And when you've finished, the computer will file it for you. Not on paper, but on a magnetic disk. Now, this is a floppy disk. Contained on here, there are very, very neat files, all under their own file headings and instantly retrievable. One box of disks like this can hold the equivalent of many, many shelves full of cumbersome paper files. Bradford Metropolitan Council lead the field in this country. They installed this WordPlex system in 1977, and it was working fully by July last year. The central memory can store 37,000 pages of A4 text. The councils halved the number of staff needed to do the work, and the directorate's output has gone up by 40%. That's because the biggest savings come from using standard letters. Is the property occupied? Yes. Do you know the occupant's name? Yes. Give me it, please. This young couple are going to be married. They've chosen their first house and have come to the council for a mortgage. This one transaction needs 25 different letters to be sent out. In the bad old days, it's a job that would have kept a typist busy for two and a half hours. Now, one girl with a word processor can send out all those letters in two minutes. No filing clerks, no rows of dusty old files, and a saving in this one department of £60,000 a year. I'll just ask you to sign here, please, would you? Texas Instruments call this their branch manager in a briefcase. Inside is a bubble memory in which you can store 80,000 characters or letters of the alphabet. But, and this is the fascinating bit, you can ring up the head office computer or word processor and then put the telephone into these rubber cups at the back. The machine will automatically transfer the text at high speed and receive any messages back. And that could put office typing very firmly into the home. 
F International is a multi-million pound computer systems house with more than 600 freelance operators. You won't find many of them here at the Chesham head office though because most of the people at the sharp end of the job work from home. Linda English works for F International as a computer programmer. She has a modern, well-equipped kitchen, two children, and a bubble memory terminal. The final act of writing a computer program is to send hundreds of lines of text to the computer you're programming. Linda can write and store the program she's working on at times most convenient to her, when the children are asleep or at school. When the job is done, the computer's only a phone call away. Linda is in the forefront of perhaps the biggest revolution for working mothers since the pill. The office and the home is rather like having your cake and eating it. Because the machines can natter away to each other by telephone, you won't have to write your letters of the future on paper, and you certainly won't have to post them. Already, exciting things are happening elsewhere in Europe in this field. Let's look at the French. Very, very imaginative. They have, are providing over 30 million terminals in homes, free of charge, despite the fact they're going to cost something like 40 pounds each, because it's cheaper than producing telephone directories. And once that terminal is in, once it's there, the incentive is to use it for other things, obviously. So it's marvellous marketing. It's cheaper over time for the French to bring out telephone directories every two years. You just plug into the central computer, you find your numbers, but at the same time you can find all sorts of other things. You will be using word processors and text processors as information units, as links in an information chain, not just to type. And when that happens, when you can get the technology into the home, when you can get the technology away from the office, when you have word processors and text processors talking to other text processors, at that point, you don't need the middleman or woman, do you? In the future, inevitably, we'll all be part of a worldwide information society. So, does it mean we'll all have to learn to type? Well, not exactly. Meet Micropad, the latest British breakthrough. You write in ballpoint pen or pencil on a pressure-sensitive surface. A microprocessor inside interprets your writing and sends it to the text processor. The processor, in turn, can play your text back onto Micropad's own display. Or it can send any other message, for that matter. But no matter how fast you scribble, typing is much faster. And up until now, there's been no alternative but to learn to type on what is really a very cumbersome device. But now, a clever inventor has teamed up with Hambro Life Assurance and a microprocessor to produce this. At present, it's made in this small factory in Mitcham. It's a light, battery-powered, highly portable electronic typewriter. By the... It's inventor, Cy Enfield, is an author and film director. He directed the film Zulu. And in fact, his latest book, Zulu Dawn, was actually written on the microwriter. The soldiers. As you see, you type using the fingers of only one hand. The added cleverness of the machine is the way you learn to type by relating the shapes of the letters to the fingers you actually use. For instance, the letter I is thumb and forefinger, and describes a vertical line. Spite, tailings, battens. With these pictorial mnemonics, I learned to touch type fairly adequately in half an hour. With a little practice, you're soon doing it automatically faster than you can write. It'll hold about six pages of A4 text at a time. You can plug in a cable and save the words on a miniature tape recorder for later use, or feed it into your own text processor at home. It's the first real breakthrough in keyboard input since the typewriter was invented exactly a hundred years ago. And until we get intelligent, voice-recognising machines, even primary schools may well be teaching reading, writing and micro-writing. Already, F International have had inquiries from husband and wife teams who want to work from home and hold down one full-time job between them. And this gives rise to a really intriguing development. As more and more of this kind of activity finds its way out of the office and into the home, we see the Industrial Revolution turn full circle. The old cottage industries gave way to factories and organised labour. 
And what we're now witnessing is the rebirth of those cottage industries. Our old friend the silicon chip, far from destroying traditional concepts like home and family, is actually helping to rebuild them. The pessimists feared that what all this technology was leading to was dull, zombie-like, standardized people. In fact, if anything, it's helping to make people more free and individual. If we do it all wrong, then it could be an absolute disaster. It's the biggest aid to totalitarianism you could ever come across, if you think about it. And that must be avoided at all costs. On the other hand, it's the greatest boon to decentralization and people fulfilling themselves. And that is the sort of way we've got to go. But it's up to us. So being an optimist, uh, I'm quite excited by it. That encircled the royal crawl.